officiating staff for tonight's game. They're getting into their spot. Bob Henry is the referee. Bob Luther and Kevin Collins are the linesmen. Michigan on the left, Edwards on the right, the two goalies for this game. The officiating staff, all NHL staff members, but the trio tonight are all Americans. The referee, Bob Henry from Detroit, Bob Luther from St. Paul, Minnesota, and Kevin Collins from Springfield, Massachusetts. The game is underway. This is Buckman clearing it to Clark Gillies to Clark Jay. He shoots it in. In after it goes Fedosov. Fedosov swung around by Bossy. Buck is cleared out to center. Larry Robinson at his own blue line for Canada. Over to Buckman. He's watched on the play by Vladimir Krutov. Robinson clears it up, and it's left right back into the Canadian zone. Makarov chasing Robinson, but Buckman's back quickly. Off the board, Clark Gillies passes it right in the middle. Krutov shot, and Buckman stops that. Clark Jay slaps it off the board. Back for it, Kazatonov, number seven. Up on the right side, it's intercepted by Marcel Dion to Wayne Gretzky. Here's Gretzky going in for Canada. In behind the net, has Lafleur in front. Passes to Marcel Dion. Dion has trouble, gets the puck again. To Gretzky. Gretzky coming right, a shot, he scores! Gretzky! with it. Shelimov coming in with Chappelle up over the line. Dion has it for Canada. Marcel Dion. Wayne Gretzky on the left side. Back into the middle. That just failed to click. Raymond Bork. Here's the announcement. Here comes Gretzky back in for Canada. Gretzky circling has the puck knocked off his stick. Gretzky from Dion at 58 seconds. Gretzky's fifth goal of Canada Cup 81. Kapustin didn't see the loose puck. Here's Craig Hartsburg. Hartsburg up over the line. Breaking in. Newgate shot. Picked out Gretzky's drive. And that goes wide. And Michigan smothers on the puck. And holds on for another face-off. Shalomov just coming back and tipping that puck off of Butch Boring Stickler. He was coming right into the slot free for the puck. Shalomov just turning around inside his blue line, tipped it off, or Goring was in home free by himself on Michigan. Butch Goring, Duguay, and Bob Ganey, the forward line for Team Canada. Number 25 for the Soviets is Vladimir Golikov. Billy Aletinov goes after the puck. Comes around the board, Gamayev is bumped by Ganey. Vladimir Zubkov sends it back into his own zone. Duguay knocks it down. Billy Aletinov. He's checked. Now it's cleared around the boards. After it is Zupkov. Straight up the middle. Duguay knocked that down. Buck cleared off the boards. Gamayev and Barry Beck going into the Team Canada zone after it. Beck, number three. Gamayev knocks him against the board. Scoring tries to get the puck loose. And we get a whistle from referee Bob Henry and a face-off in Team Canada zone. Butch Goring having an excellent series, but very important. That first goal so early in the hockey game gives the team a little lift. In fact, everybody on the team can bench a little excited. Having getting that early goal, that's very important in the hockey game. But go ahead, it gives you that confidence that you need. Number 22, Viktor Sluktov, the big centerman for the Soviets. Sluktov with Homotov and Skvortsev, and the puck is cleared down the ice into the Soviet zone. Fetisov, number two by Rick Middleton. Here's Fedosov. Now he's bumped out of the play there by Ken Lindman. Buck comes back inside the line. Robinson up the middle. Middleton had trouble with it. Bumped with Lindman. Slupchov to Sportsev. And he couldn't control the pass. Slupchov again at center. Drops it back into his own zone. Sportsev has the puck at the Team Canada line. Slapped off his stick by Robinson. Here comes Lindman. In with Danny Gare. A shot. And that 
shot goes wide. Comes around to the blue line and out the center. Luke stop number 22, Middleton got a piece of him. But Potman is back to cover up. Potman in front of his own net. Good for checking there by Andre Homatop, number 15. Luke Top knocks the puck down, then it's cleared off a stick back into the Soviet zone. Canada on a goal by Gretzky, leading one to nothing. Larionov, number 11, swinging out of his own zone, a pass right onto the stick of Brian Pache. Here's Pache for Canada right in front, and he can't get a shot. Bossy's drive a stop. Robinson over the top of the net. Here's Putman setting up for Canada. Drops it back. Clark Gillies getting set. A low drive, and that hit a player in front, hit Bossy. Or rather, uh, Trotje. Bossy in front. Trotje going after it. Michigan holds on, and we have another faceoff in the Soviet zone. An action-packed start to this game between Canada and the Soviet Union. Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. We've played four minutes and two seconds in the opening period. Gretzky from Dion at 58 seconds, the only scoring play of the game. Both teams are at full strength. Trotje. Out there with Bossy and Clark Gillies. It's back to the line. Raymond Fork slaps it off the board. The Soviet player Babinov slipped and fell. Here's Bossy, and he couldn't get the puck. Brought out by number 21, Sergei Sepalia. Up on the right side, Shalimov drops it there. Here's Kapustin. He's trying to get in front. Fork checks him. Comes around the board. Vasilyev keeps it in. In front. Oh, and what a hit on Sepalia as he was flattened inside the Team Canada line. Kelly up, getting up slowly. Now Gillies, number nine, tried to get it out. Kelly Moff keeps it in, and his shot is knocked down. Trotje just let the puck roll into the Soviet zone. Here's Vasilia. Stopped by Brian Trotje, coming in with Marcel Dion. Here's Dion, Trotje hitting for the net, and Dion overskated the puck. Now he has it again. Marcel Dion, number 16 for Canada. Good control there, but then passed it right in front to Vasilia. Kapustin shoots it, knocked down by Raymond Fort. After it goes Shelimov, but Hartsburg is there to bring it back for Canada. He Lafleur to Hartsburg, up to Marcel Dion. He deflects it in, and the Soviet player number three, that's Vladimir Zukov, one of the youngsters on defense for the Soviet. A 23-year-old defenseman, Zukov, passes the puck out, and it's brought up by Gamaya. Coming in with Golikov, Gamaya, number 18, rolled it to the net. Don Edwards knocks it into the corner. Lafleur, long pass for Dion. He has trouble with that as the puck was rolling. Golikov checked by Gretzky, who almost had a close call inside the Soviet zone. Here's Gretzky again. Dion helping out to Guy Lafleur. Lafleur setting up. There's a shot, and it bounced off Billy Letvin off skate and went wide. Back, keeps it in for Canada. Gretzky had trouble controlling the puck off the boards. And bringing it out for the Soviets, Vladimir Golikov. A pass, here over the line, Shalimov couldn't get a good shot. Here's Beck in the corner, trying to get the puck loose. Helped out by Paul Reinhardt. Reinhardt of the Calgary Flames. Cleared it off the glass and up over the glass. And out of play. Well, Team Canada controlling the play early in the hockey game. Gretzky four checking, you know, and Wayne Gretzky, you know, just uh, scoring that uh, early goal, always dangerous around the net. Again, he had it. The puck just uh, jumped over a stick behind that. He was ready to make that play again, deep inside the Soviet zone. Marcel Dion in Canada Cup play has three goals, six assists. That, of course, including Canada Cup 76 and this tournament here. Betasov inside his own line, sends the puck out. Goring traps it there for Team Canada. Ganey goes up after it, and it's brought out by Sportsnet, who slips and falls as he gets to the Canadian line. Ganey in behind the net to Paul Reinhardt, trying to hit Goring with that pass. Duguay, great burst of speed, went after it, but just failed to pick up the loose puck. Betasov, he drops it in. It's called on a delayed offside at the Soviet line. Canada leading one to nothing. Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. There is Middleton slipped right into the net behind Michigan. Vasilia, that center. The veteran defenseman playing with a broken nose suffered earlier in the tournament against Sweden. Here's Middleton off the board. Middleton trying to get Lindman with that pass. It rolls into the Soviet zone. Lindman's there 
to eliminate the icing, getting there before Bob and I. Lindsman digging, comes in front, but can't get a shot as Basilia squeezes him off the puck. Makarov, number 24, loses it to Middleton, a shot, the rebound. It's stopped right on the line by Michigan. Makarov gave up on the play as he was slapped by Middleton, giving Rick Middleton a clear shot on goal. Well, you don't stop, especially when you're there. Makarov seemed to take it in the eye. There you see him just going off, and Middleton has the freebie right off. In fact, I don't know how the puck would uh, didn't go in the net. It seemed to hit the post and then come right under Michigan's pad. Team can it came within an eight of going ahead two goals. Makarov just going off the puck and allowing the layup for Middleton. He just puts the puck back and hits the post and goes under Michigan's pad. Canada has outshot the Soviets five to one so far in the period. Face off in the Soviet zone, 12-19, left to play in the first period. Kapustin in his own zone. Zupkov brings it out up to his own blue line, then forced back. That pass intended for Chappelle have got over his stick, and Craig Hartsburg bumped by Kapustin in his own zone. Now Clark Gillies. Mossy after the puck on the right side, trying to get it back to Gillies, and that's broken up. Number 23, Shalimov up over the line, coming in with Chappelle up a shot, and John Edwards makes the save, his second save of the game. Donnie Edwards, 25 years of age, played junior in Kitchener, Ontario, has a total of 14 shutouts in National Hockey League play, and he was telling us the other day one of his proudest moments is when he shared the Vesna Trophy with Buffalo's Bob Sylvain. And perhaps a little bit of a surprise playing today. Scotty Bowman showing a lot of confidence in him because Lyotta had played all the time, including the pre-tournament win over the Soviets, and then coming in here today not having played and actually not having uh, practiced until uh, Smith broke the finger and he came back with the hockey club. Face off will be to his left in the Team Canada zone. It goes to Barry Beck. Beck tried to hit. Guy Lafleur with that pass. Paul Reinhardt traps it. Goes to an open wing. Dion trying to catch up. Gretzky stops it back as Barry Beck now. Number three to Dion. In the middle to Gretzky. Here's Gretzky coming in on goal. And Kazatonov had him tied up and he couldn't get a shot. Good defensive work by Kazatonov. Now the puck goes to Guy Lafleur. He's bumped by Fetisov. Kazatonov, number seven, up on that left side, draws Detsky. He's bumped by Paul Reinhardt, and the puck goes loose at center. Golikov drops it back into his own zone. Kazatonov, number seven, 21 years of age, straight up the middle for the Soviet. Gretzky almost hooked it away. Now here's draws Detsky, number 13, a shot missed by about five feet. Betasov for the Soviet, lost control, and Reinhardt backhands it to Barry Beck. Around the boards to Marcel Dion, out to Wayne Gretzky. And uh, Gretzky had trouble, Golikov knocked it away from him. Kazatonov. Yamayev, number 18, winding up on that left side, passes over to Drozdetsky. Here's Drozdetsky, Beck got a piece of him, and Butch Goring, 14 Canada, got it outside the line, it's cleared down the ice. Dugay and Fetisov both got to it, and then got tied up, and the puck remained just behind them. Betasov in behind his own goal for the Soviets. Gets a pass straight up the middle. Brought out, up over the line goes Luke Top, the big centerman, a backhand shot, and I believe Edwards just got a piece of that. Stopped at the line. Delayed offside coming up. Now Robinson has the puck, clears it. Dugay, he's bumped along the boards by Alexander Sportsev. Vasilia, the captain of the Soviets, gets the puck to Sportsev. Victor's looped off up over the line. He leaves it there. Omatov in front. Sports up with check by Rick Middleton. Looped off circling the net in front. And he couldn't get a solid shot on goaltender Edwards. Canada, Ken Lindsay up on the right side. Danny Gare a shot. And that goes wide. Slapped behind the net. Gare trying to get it loose. The silly have pushed him. Now Gare trying to get that puck loose to Middleton. And the Soviets come right out again. This is Sportsap. Up over the line. Sportsap to Homatov. And that just failed. Robinson as they go end to end. Here's Larry Robinson in for Canada. And he lost it. Middleton helps us. 
Rick Middleton back to Robinson, has trouble controlling the pass. Gets it back and outside the line, and Potvan forced to go back to center ice. We have nine minutes left to play in the first period. Canada leading one to nothing, and Trotje takes that puck over the line, and it's called on the offside. Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. Seven minutes and six seconds left to play in the first period. The only goal, Gretzky's fifth of the Canada Cup from Marcel Dion. That was scored in the first minute, 58 seconds. No penalties as yet. A wide open period. There's a shot. Fishkin juggles it. Duguay goes after it. And Fedosov comes up with it for the Soviets. Caney's check. Duguay in front of Goring. And it just rolled off the end of his stick. He couldn't get a solid drive. Now it's backhanded out to center. Potvan shoots it right back in off the glass. Fetisov, he's bumped by Duguay, goring in front to Ganey, and Michigan pulls that out of the air and holds on. Duguay and Fetisov having a little hassle there just against the boards. Fetisov come up, he's uh, touching his forehead as if he thought he might be cut. They were high sticking one another against the board, straightening out his helmet. But the two of them, that's the first sign we've had of any little bit of ill feeling between the two hockey clubs. And we'd like to take a moment to salute the Markham Major Midget Hockey Team. There you see them in the gray sweatsuits. They're going to Finland and Russia in December to play in the Forza Cup tournament. And they're at the Canada Cup as guests of their sponsor, MAI of Canada. Good luck to those youngsters. Good luck to all youngsters across Canada with minor hockey just about ready to start for another season. And here at the Montreal Forum, it's a 1-0 game. Canada leading the Soviets. Soviets breaking out of their own zone. Drozdetsky up to the Team Canada line. Bumped with Larry Robinson. Potvan, Gamayev chasing him. Duguay and Babinov had him lined up. Here's Ganey. Babinov has the puck for the Soviets. Drops it back to Vasilyev. Up to Gamayev, number 18, in the middle to Golikov. Golikov back to Drozdetsky. Duguay is dumped. Here's Drozdetsky in front, and he's stopped by Larry Robinson. Loose puck rolls into the Soviet zone. Vasilyev. Danny Gare watching him. Tried to get Gamayev with that pass. It rolls down the ice. And back for it is Ken Lindsman icing against the Soviets. You may have noticed that there have been a few times when Team Canada has just uh, dealt out resounding, just <laughs> crunching checks around the blue line. The Soviets, when they get to that blue line, they like to cross, try to confuse the defenseman. And on two occasions, Ron Duguay just about uh, had one lined up. And then, of course, we saw one uh, earlier by Raymond Bork. When they cross, sometimes the Soviets go and keep their head up after they make that cross. Team Canada's caught them two or three times here in the first period with just great checks as they cross and are not looking after they make the pass. So is Luke Toff. Against Lindsman, the puck rolls out, taken by Sportsap. He has great speed. Sportsap up over the line. His shot way off the target. And Bork has it for Canada. Here's Bork inside his own line. Lindsman takes the pass, trying to get it to Gare. Sportsap knocks the puck ahead. Right up over the line. Homotov couldn't get a shot. Knocked off his stick. And they leave it there. Gare clears it to center. Sportsap drops it back. Vladimir Zubkov. Billy Aletinov, number 14. Back to Zubkov. Gare into four. Check him. Omotov, number 15, bumped by Lindsman. Here's Gare knocking the puck loose. Mishkin scoops it up and holds on. Rick Middleton, a good shift there for Team Canada. Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. And the attendance here at the Montreal Forum for this battle for top spot between the Soviets and Team Canada. I'm Bernie Pascal along with Tom Watt with Canada leading one to nothing. Reinhardt passes the puck off the board. Bossy back to Reinhardt. Checked by Fedosov and Krutov who comes up with the puck. Now he slaps it out to center. Very back there for Canada. Rache, number 20, over to Clark Gillies. It just rolled away from Gillies before he could get a shot. Now the Soviets come right back. Makarov, Marianov coming in front to flex the puck. Krutov in the corner. He drops it back to the line. Fedosov, his backhander is knocked down, gets it again. A shot. Here's Makarov on the rebound, and he fanned on that drive. Makarov gets it again. Bumped against the board. Mark Gillies has it at center. Makarov is checked, and the puck rolls into the Soviet zone. 
Four minutes and 30 seconds remain in the opening period. Betasov, number two. Passed it over to number seven, Alexei Kazatonov. Back to Betasov. Gretzky in for checking for Canada. Bachman at his own line. Number five, Makarov in to forecheck him. That's too hard to handle for Marcel Dion. It goes down the ice. Kazatonov touches it, and it's icing against Team Canada. Of course, the Soviets went uh, to the 1948 Olympics as observers to start their very impressive hockey program over the years. 1948, they sat back and watched the Olympics. Then entered their first world championships in 1954. They went through that undefeated, and the rest has been history. And who is here observing everything here with uh, the eye of the man who started it? One of the greatest influences in developing the distinctive Soviet style, Anatoly Tarasov. And he's been attending the Soviet practices. In fact, he's been here all day. We saw him this morning, and he was at the afternoon game. Real keen hockey man. Here's Chappelle up a shot. Edwards stopped that. Hot man in front. Another drive. Hits the stick in front. As Chappelle up was set up in front. Dennis Buckman trying to get it loose. It's taken by Shelimov. Shelimov got it out. Gretzky's upset. There'll be a penalty to the Soviet. Here's Lafleur coming in with Marcel Dion. And the shot goes wide. A delayed penalty against the Soviet. Scoring Lafleur. Oh, what a save by Michigan. Oh, did he make a spectacular save. Canada Cup 81. Action galore. And that sparkling save by Michigan. Butch scoring coming over the boards and the delayed penalty taking the place of the goaltender is able to uh, slip the puck through to Guy Lafleur. Michigan's glove just darted out to take a sure goal away from Guy Lafleur. But there's the advantage of an alert goaltender getting to the bench. Usually teams have the center in the next line up and that was Butch scoring going over the boards able to set it up. And yes, that is Jackie Stewart who has great reflexes as well. In fact, you'll be one of our guests tonight. Motor sport fame Jackie Stewart watching this game along with 16,000 plus at the forum and of course viewers right across Canada on the CTV network and we hope you're enjoying this game it's a dandy with 320 left to play in the first period Kapustin going to the penalty box for the Soviets at 1640 there's Kapustin in the penalty box tripping penalty so Canada's power play, Lafleur, Middleton, Marcel Dion, Gretzky, and Potvin on the point. Here's Middleton coming in front, rolls the puck there, and it just got away from Guy Lafleur. He drops back to the line, Potvin takes it in deep. Here's a pass to Gretzky. Gretzky over to Rick Middleton. Middleton bumped against the board, Billy left it off. Here's uh, Middleton trying to get a shot, the puck just bounced over his stick. And it's cleared down the ice. Lafleur goes back after it for Canada. 130 left in the power play. LaFleur straight up the middle. Middleton over the line. Just failed to grab that pass, and Michigan covers up. And we have another whistle. The faceoff again in the Soviet zone. He gets a word from referee Bob Henry. Well, as we've seen before in this tournament, Bob Henry is warning Michigan that he shouldn't be uh, diving on that puck outside of the crease when he's got an opportunity to clear that puck, or he'll be called for delaying the game. Bob Henry, uh, two years in the National Hockey League officiating staff, mainly in the minor leagues, but they think so much of him. Scotty Morrison says that he will be seeing a lot of action in the NHL this coming year. A native of Detroit, Michigan. 125 left in the power play. Trotje moves in for this faceoff. Lafleur and Gretzky. Now he uh, asks Lafleur to come to the opposite side. Gretzky to the other. Marcel Dion and Potvin on defense. Number 25 for the Soviets. That's Vladimir Golikov. The puck slapped over at the boards. Dion clears it in. Here's Trotje. As a tone off, checks him. Lafleur a shot. Hit escape. Trotje has it for Canada. Back to Marcel Dion. To Potvin. Potvin fakes a shot. Gives it to Gretzky. Gretzky setting up. Passed in front to Dion. Dion drops it back to Potvin, slaps it in. Here's Gretzky, Lafleur, a shot. Michigan makes another great save. Well, that's twice Michigan has robbed Lafleur. Right uh, when he was off the edge, the first, the glove save early. Wayne Gretzky just taking his time to slide the puck through. 
Guy Lafleur can't find it right off the bat. When he does get a stick on it, Michigan drops down and kills the puck. But again, the pass coming through, second time in a row. Guy Lafleur being robbed by Michigan. Well, a hockey writer from Cass in the Soviet Union did a lot of research. He came up with this interesting statistic that Soviet teams, midget, junior, opposition against NHL teams, they've played 410 times since 1954. The Soviets have won 282. Now, that's a lot of research. Even Ron Andrews <laughs> would have to work a day to figure that out. <laughs> one nothing. Team Canada leading the Soviets. A giveaway. Gamayev has the puck, and then he lost it. Robinson brings it back for Team Canada. 35 seconds left in the penalty to Kapustin. Here's Pache bumped against the boards by Sergei Babinov. Soviets slap it off the boards back into the Team Canada zone. Raymond Borg, two years in the NHL with the Boston Bruins, and he's a great young defenseman. Pache takes the puck off the boards. Pache, number 20, bumped by Gamayev. Passes to Rick Middleton in front. Crutch shot. Michigan stop that. And it's cleared down the ice with five seconds remaining in the Soviet penalty. Bork winding up as you see Kapustin step onto the ice. Here comes Bork up over the Soviet line. Goes after the puck deep behind the net. Bobinov checks him hard against the board. Number nine is Vladimir Krutov. Now the Soviets bring it back over the line. That drive hit the crossbar. Shot by Kapustin, rattled off the crossbar. Edwards juggles the next drive and holds on with 58 seconds remaining in the opening period. Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. The only goal of the game was scored at the 58-second mark, and that number comes up again, 58 seconds remaining in the opening period. They'll drop the puck in the Team Canada zone. Ready now, Ganey slapped it back. Billy Oletinov gets a shot right on, and that's stopped by goaltender Edwards. Puck man out to center. Here's Goring going after it. Billy Oletinov got there first. Billy Oletinov passes it in. After it goes, Sergei Makarov. Makarov tied up by Barry Beck. 35 seconds left. Beck then knocks the puck over against the board. Ron Duguay has it for Canada. He's done by Vladimir Zukov. There'll be a penalty coming up to the Soviets again. Edwards heads to the bench for the extra attacker. Goring, 20 seconds left in the period. A penalty coming up to the Soviets. A delayed call. It'll be Zukov that'll be penalized. Here's Goring setting up in his own zone. Goring to center. Up over the Soviet line goes the puck. And Zukov touches it. And there's the whistle. And a penalty for tripping to Zukov of the Soviets with just four seconds left in the period. Well, with four seconds remaining and having that man advantage in, uh, inside the Soviet zone, it's still dangerous to uh, being able to control that puck. We may be able to get one shot on goal with just four remaining. So the Canadian players over to the bench to talk to coach Scotty Bowman as Zukov will sit and watch the final four seconds of this period from the penalty box. You see the trip coming here. Zhukov just getting his stick in front of Ron Duguay, dumping him at center ice. Second Soviet penalty in a row here in the first period. You take out your goalie here. Four seconds remaining. Can they ice the puck in four seconds? Maybe we should take the two-man advantage to get an opportunity on goal. Well, many will argue that. They say it takes, what, six to seven seconds to shoot the puck? Well, 60 miles an hour is 88 feet a second. So if you can shoot at 60 miles an hour, it takes three seconds to go the length of the ice at an average of 60 miles an hour. So maybe with four, you might take the gamble. <laughs> well, we'll be watching some games with the Winnipeg Jets with four seconds. Tom Watt will be coaching Winnipeg this year. <laughs> Marcel Dion for this face-off against Luke Tom. Deep in the Soviet zone. Michigan, a surprise starter ahead of Tretiak. Hot fan, a shot. Dion almost... Picked up the loose puck, still there, they score! But no, the goal does not count. The green light is on, and the red light and the green light cannot go on at the same time, and the green light came on to end the period before the puck was in the net. A tough break for Team Canada because it just went behind Michigan. Well, you know, Bob Henry, the referee, he signals a goal. The puck comes across in front, and you see the green light going on, before the red light goes on. Now, whether that's the difference in the timing, 
of the goal judge putting his finger on the button to signal the goal. But the puck comes across, it goes in the net, and the green light is on before the red light can go on. And they both are not allowed to go on. The, goal, the referee puts his hand up, but the goal judge uh, has uh, already, uh, was not able to put the red light on in time. The green light goes on to end the period, and there's no goal. Henry, as we get set now to start the second period, and remember the Soviets, Zubkov in the penalty box. He has 156 remaining in his penalty. So Canada on the power play. Dion Middleton, Guy Lafleur, Gretzky, and Dennis Potvin as the second period is underway. Here comes Gretzky in with Middleton. Gretzky right in front to Middleton, and he just failed to get a shot as the puck rolled off his stick. In behind the net, Gretzky knocked against the boards. It's cleared out to center and down the ice. Backboard goes Dennis Potvin, number five. Five-time All-Star in the National League. Potvin brings it straight up the middle, up over the center line, in over the Soviet zone. Slutkov slapped it off his stick. Here's Lafleur Middleton in front, pass nowhere near him. Marcel Dion traps the puck momentarily, but here's a two-on-one break. Slutkov is coming in for Sportsap. Back to Slutkov off his stick, and it just went wide. Gretzky lined up and hit by Fedesov. Drop back now, here's Marcel Dion. Canada's 19th power play opportunity. They have two goals on power plays, both by Bossy. 55 seconds left in this power play. Here's Potvin, Duke Lafleur. Passed it over, Marcel Dion, back to Lafleur, setting up to Potvin in front of shot. Oh, and Michigan got a piece of that and deflected it wide. Betasov brings it out to center. 35 seconds left in the penalty. Potvin deep in his own zone. In the first two minutes of period number two at the Montreal Forum, the puck cleared into the Soviet zone. Vasilyev, it's icing against Team Canada with 23 seconds left in the Soviet penalty. Well, Team Canada again putting on the pressure, and I'd, I'd have to say so far that Michigan is the star of the hockey game. Team Canada's had by far the greater opportunities out shooting the Soviets at this point, 12 to 7. The good opportunities, two from Lafleur, the, the stops, the stop there from Denny Potvin, just seeing at the last moment from the shot from the point. I would have to say that Team Canada has had by far the greater opportunities early in the hockey game. Soviets have been a man short 22 times in the tournament. No goals have uh, been scored against the Soviets. In fact, they've scored two short-handed goals. And they've been successfully killing off this penalty, heading into the final seconds of the minor infraction. Canada, Hartsburg got a shot right on, deflected up over the glass, and out of play by Michigan. Scotty Bowman, you know, he's pretty wise. You see, uh, he's been forced to use forwards on the point. He's played uh, Dion at the point at certain times. He's played uh, Guy Lafleur at the point at certain times. But here, late in the, pe in the penalty, when there's, say, 12, 20 seconds remaining, he goes back so that he doesn't get caught even sides with a forward playing defense. He's back now with two defensemen in uh, Hartsburg and Bork playing at the point. There's a shot right from the draw by Mike Bossy that just sailed wide. Comes out to center. And the Soviets are quick on the puck, Golikov. And then he was checked as he passed the Team Canada line. And now we have a hooking infraction coming up. And it'll be to the Soviets. And Golikov hands over to the penalty box, number 25. Golikov for hooking. So another power play for Team Canada. The other penalty had just expired. Scotty Bowman sends out another power play unit of Trottier, Mike Bossy, and Clark Gillies as Golikov sits in the penalty box for hooking. Scotty Bowman, of course, has fond memories coaching here in the Montreal Forum for years. The coach of the Montreal Canadiens, coach many Stanley Cup champions, and then, of course, Canada Cup 76. Scotty was the winning coach in that game, and very optimistic that Team Canada can repeat that performance this time around. They lead this game one to nothing on the power play again, and the puck is stopped, and Chapalia clears it back down the ice. Craig Hartsburg, number four, backboard for Canada, the native of Stratford, Ontario. Former outstanding junior in Sault Ste. Marie, a pass to Raymond Bork. Bork shoots it into the Soviet zone. Bobinov goes back after it. 
He couldn't get to the loose puck. It comes back to the line. Bork slapped it off the board. Gave it right to Vasiliev, who brings it out for the Soviet. Up on the right side, Shalimov. He's coming in with Shapeliev. Outside the line, Babinov forced to wait for his teammates to get onside. Shapeliev, watched by Bossy. Takes it over the Canadian line. Bumped by Raymond Bork. Bossy ahead to Wayne Gretzky. He stopped, and the puck is slapped at the center ice area. 55 seconds remaining in the Soviet penalty. Here comes Rick Middleton up to Marcel Dion, who takes the pass. Dion, a shot. Miskin, Gretzky, the rebound. And that went wide as it was bounced off the goalie. A close call there, Dion and Gretzky. LaFleur back in behind his own net, winding up for Canada. Great speed, LaFleur up to the Soviet line to Gretzky. Gretzky moving in front and lost control of the puck as it bounced off the Soviet player, Zubkov. 22 seconds left in the Soviet penalty. Canada won, the Soviets nothing. Gretzky at his own blue line, number 99 to Lafleur, and Robinson had bounced off him and rolls right to Michigan, who holds on. And there's Alan Eagleson, the organizer of the Canada Cup, and the gentleman sitting right next to him, Irv Ungerman. And uh, you'll recall the Ali Fraser fight in 71. He promoted that close circuit telecast in Canada. Ungerman has the close circuit rights for Canada for the upcoming Leonard Hearns match on September 16th. 13 seconds remaining in the penalty to Golikov. Now it comes back to Potvin. Gretzky setting up a pass to Robinson. LaFleur scores! He LaFleur standing in front with Robinson. The pass goes to LaFleur and it's 2-0. A sweet pass, very, very sweet. He put it right on a stick, put it between people. What Wayne Gretzky does so well, he can pass that puck. He's got the great anticipation, the nice touch. Watch the go right between those sticks, right underneath, right on LaFleur's stick. An easy one for Guy LaFleur, but the pass, just a super pass by Wayne Gretzky. Another look at it, it's tipped back into uh, Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky just watches. Look at him put it right underneath the stick and on to Guy Lafleur's stick for the goal. Oh, Canada leading the Soviets two to nothing. Lukov trying to get the pass ahead to Alexander Sportsev. He's bumped by Barry Beck and Bob Ganey. There's it to an open wing. We have a whistle as the puck was held against the boards. Unfortunately, the players didn't hear the whistle and that's why play continues. Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. LaFleur with his second goal of Canada Cup 81 from Gretzky and Potvin at 349. And Canada leading by a score of 2 to nothing. Reinhardt, number 24, off the boards to Bob Ganey. Up the middle to Duguay, coming up with Goring, who takes the pass. Goring on right wing, watched by Fedosov, and the shot hit Fedosov, comes to Duguay, and Ganey deflects it in front. And it goes up over the glass, and now we have Duguay and Fedosov pushing at the side of the Soviet net. That power play goal by Lafleur was the first power play goal given up by the Soviets in this tournament. Well, that's the second time that pair have been at it, and... Uh, you know, you were mentioning about Fedosov being an all-star in the World Junior Tournament. He was an all-star in the World Junior Tournament in uh, 1978 here in Montreal, and he went right with the national team and was named to the all-tournament team playing with the national squad after the juniors. So he was an all-star in the same year, both at the World Tournament and the World Junior Tournament, and won gold medals in each. Not a bad start with the national team of the Soviet Union. Well, he's going to get a couple of minutes to rest from the opposite side of the rink. He joins Duguay in the penalty box as they get penalized for that mix-up in the Soviet zone. The time of the penalty, as you see, 4 minutes and 21 seconds. Face off will be to the left of Michigan, and the puck comes back. Here's Raymond Fort getting set, a shot kicked out by Michigan. Babinov has trouble with it along the boards, now skates almost in front of his own net. Buck comes out to center. Here's Drozdetsky, number 13. Drozdetsky up over the line, and it's taken by Craig Hartsburg. Over to Mike Bossy. Bossy over the Soviet line, a shot. Michigan deflects that off the stick, up over the glass, and out of play. Mike Bossy. He'll be
be heading into his fifth year in the National Hockey League with the Islanders. In his first four, he scored a total of 241 goals. Not a bad start. <laughs> Here's Raymond Bork clearing the puck into the corner. He's bumped. Trotje with Bobinoff. Now it's cleared. Hartsburg traps the puck. It's got the flex in front. Bobinoff knocked it loose into the corner. Bobinoff with Vasiliev. Standing there to offer some assistance. It goes to Trotje. Ryan Trotje. Bossy had it get by him. And Vasiliev, the veteran captain of the Soviet national team. Drozdetsky up to Gamayev. Gamayev watched by Hartsburg. Puts on the brakes. Comes back to Bobinoff. Bobinoff couldn't get a shot. The puck came outside the line. Exactly one minute remaining in the penalties to Fedosov and to Dugay. Butch Goring, number 91 in his own zone for Canada. Hartsburg knocked the puck loose. Here's Hartsburg, number four. Lined up by Gamayev. The puck is taken in front by Drozdetsky. Dropped it back and Zubkov shot the stop. Gets it again. Ganey blocks that. Hartsburg off the board. Goring couldn't control the puck as it bounced off the boards in front of the Team Canada bench. 30 seconds left in the penalty. Here's Hartsburg. Gamayev had him lined up, but missed. Bob Ganey brings it back for Canada. Ganey's shot hits the post. Bob Ganey, a low drive, bounces off the post. Kapustin back for the Soviets. His drive up over the glass and out of play. Well, some end-to-end -end action there. Bob Ganey just broke around the new proud father this evening, but broke around to the outside. There seemed to be a confusion in the defense of the Soviet Union. They had to switch. A nice low shot hit the far post when it had Michigan beat. Bob Ganey voted the National Hockey League's best defensive player the last four years and a proud recipient of the Frank Selke Trophy. 13.55 left to play in the second period. At the Montreal Forum, a battle for top spot in Canada Cup 81. Hot van. Off the board, stopped there by Zubkov. Zubkov shoots it back into the Team Canada zone. Marcel Dion, Billy Aletinov, got a piece of him. Robinson goes after it. Robinson for Team Canada to LaFleur at center. Coming in with Marcel Dion and Gretzky. Gretzky takes the pass, tried to get it back to Robinson, and the Soviets almost have a break, but Kapustin can't catch up to the puck. It's cleared, trapped inside the line by Shalimov. Shelimov into the corner, and Robinson knocks it away from him. Soviets get it again. Kapustin, number eight, moving in. Potvan collides with him. Potvan and Kapustin fighting for the puck. Shalimov trying to get it, and Potvan smothers it with 13.06 remaining in the second period. Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. Uh, leading by a score of 2 to nothing, Gretzky and Lafleur have scored the goals as we approach the midway point in the second period and the game. Zupkov, number three. Zupkov gets the puck out. Golikov, then he clears it over. Gamayev brings it over the line. Gillies watched in front there, almost lost it to Golikov. And the Soviets have it at the Team Canada line. Drozdetsky then drops it deep into his own zone. Zupkov, number three, over to Golikov. Vladimir Golikov from Dynamo in the Soviet Union. He had 23 goals with Dynamo. Quite an impressive year. Here's Kutche for Canada in front. And he clipped the puck there and it bounced off the skate. No one could get a shot. Barry Beck, he keeps it in. Michigan knocks it in behind the net. Zupkov, number three. He's checked. Here's Mike Bossy. And Gillies ran into Zupkov and he'll get a penalty. Second penalty in a row to Team Canada, the second elbowing penalty in a row. And the, the difference in these hockey games, really the 3-2 uh, win for Team Canada in the pre-tournament game was how well Canada killed those penalties. So Gillies heads to the box, and Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. Clark Gillies in the penalty box for elbowing at 10-44. So the Soviets with another power play opportunity. They're down two to nothing. Robinson to Potvan. Potvan just shoots the puck into the Soviet zone. Backboard is Fetisov, number two. Fetisov getting speed in his own zone there up to center. Goring watching him. The pass got to Lurionov. Then it was knocked off his stick. Kazatonov, number seven. Gets it into Makarov. 
He's the speedster on this Soviet team. Duke Fedosov lets the Soviets having trouble getting to center ice. And a shot by Ganey and Michigan had to be alert that time as the shot came right from center ice. Great board checking by Team Canada. Goring just flips the puck in behind the net. The Soviets are having trouble getting to center ice on this power play. Now Kazatonov, Larionov, and he's forced back by Ganey. 1-10 left in the penalty. Now Makarov, he comes up to center, gets over the line, into the Team Canada zone. Krutov heading for the net. It comes back, Kazatonov, a shot, they score! The Soviets get on the board, a power play goal. Team Canada has done such a great job of killing it off, and this is the first time Makarov was able to penetrate the zone. Kazatinov, the long shot from the point, is just tipped on the way to the net, bounces by Donnie Edwards, but Team Canada done a great job until Makarov was able to get that puck inside the zone. The shot from the point, the tip in in front of the net. The Soviets back in the hockey game, 2-1 Team Canada. Larry Onoff, I believe, deflected the puck in front for the Soviets' first goal and a power play effort. 8.15 left to play in the second period. The two teams back at full strength. Here goes Rick Middleton. Middleton coming in right in front, and Gare trying to pick up that pass. He couldn't get by Vasilia. Middleton again. Gare trying to get the puck. Middleton knocked it down. Here comes Luktov. Luktov back to Sportsev. In front, Luktov a shot. Not a very hard shot. It just rolled off the stick. Edwards making the save. Now Middleton. He bumps with Alexander Sportsev, and the puck is taken by Kenny Lindsman. He can't get out. Now Danny Gare will try for Canada. Ahead to Middleton, back to Gare, coming in with Lindsman. Here's Gare. Middleton takes the pass. Returned as Gare was knocked to the ice by Sportsev and couldn't get a shot. Now Canada has it again. Gare right in front to Middleton. Middleton trying to get a shot. Michigan stops it. Gare hammers away. And they get a whistle. Gare and Sluktov pushing. Now Hartsburg comes in and takes a shot at Sluktov. Wouldn't take much to ignite something here. Linsman then gets a poke at uh, Vasilia. Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. So the penalized players heading to the box, Linsman of Team Canada and Vasilia for the Soviet Union. That last Soviet goal was scored by number 11, Larionov. A power play goal, Kazatonov and Makarov getting assists at 11.45. There's Linsman and Vasiliev, the captain of the Soviet team. Face off will be in the Soviet zone. Brian Trottier out there now for Team Canada. Reinhardt and Barry Beck on defense. Trottier moved out of the face-off position. Bossy's there. Zubkov dropped it into his own zone. Billy Aletinov to Kapustin. Kapustin up the middle. Chapeliev back to Kapustin. Trottier after him takes him out of the play and Beck slaps the puck off the board. Billy Aletinov for the Soviets to Chapeliev, number 21. Back to Billy Aletinov. Billy Aletinov, a pass to Zubkov. It bounces off his stick. Shapeliev, number 21, sends the puck over to Pustin. Back to Zubkov. Here comes Zubkov. He got to the line, then forced back. Kapustin couldn't control the pass. Got away from him. Barry Beck, up to Reinhardt. He shoots the puck into the Soviet zone. 1-10, remaining in the double minor penalties to Linsman and Vasilia. Canada two, and the Soviets one. Here's Zubkov, up to Kapustin, has trouble, back to Zubkov. Chapeliev trailing on it. Here's Chapeliev right in front, he scores! Chapeliev for the Soviets, and it's all tied at 2-2. Chapeliev being set up just perfectly in front of the net, made the little deke to his left, comes back to his forehand. Edwards going one way, just slides the puck in as help comes a little too late, but the good play was made deep in the zone on the pass as he just cuts around the last defender, moving again to his forehand, sliding the puck by Donnie Edwards, 2-2. So with 6.20 left to play in the second period, it's a brand new game, a 2-2 tie. Chapeliev at 
Marianov getting the other Soviet goal. LaFleur and Gretzky have scored for Canada. Here's Gretzky to LaFleur, and he was hooked. He couldn't get a shot. Now Canada on the defense here with Fedosov leading a Soviet attack. Robinson got a piece of him. Gostetsky backhands the puck into the Team Canada zone. Hot fan for Canada. Watch by Drozdetsky. Now he comes out over his own blue line. Flips the puck. Robinson has it. Number 19 for Canada. Robinson over the line, and it's knocked in by Wayne Gretzky, and it's called on the delayed offside. There's Wayne Gretzky. And I'd like to remind you, this program is copyright and strictly for the private use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or exhibition of this game without the express written permission of the CTV television network and Harkham Consultants Limited is strictly prohibited. Well, Team Canada stopped skating here. The Soviets with two quick goals back in the hockey game, and they're trying to finesse a little too much now, trying to finesse the puck rather than moving with the puck and trying to make their skating do the work for them. Now the puck goes to the Soviet player, Fetisov. Ganey keeping an eye on him. Krutov, Larionov, who scored one of the two Soviet goals to Fetisov. And he's hammered to the ice. Bob Ganey then clears the puck down into the Soviet zone. The penalized players are back on. Linsman heads to the bench, replaced by Lafleur. Vladimir Krutov, 21 years of age, out there for the Soviets to Fetisov. He dumps it in front, has a tone off, up the middle to center. Here's a race, Hartsburg got uh, Krutov tied up, a shot, Edwards stopped it. Hartsburg off the boards, has a tone off, keeps it in, now it's cleared out to center, has a tone off to Krutov. Krutov fires the puck in, and it hits the glass. Dion, bumped by Makarov, cleared in behind the net, Makarov for the Soviets. Krutov heading for the front, now he picks up the puck, and uh, Raymond Fork gets to it for Canada. Tried to hit LaFleur, and the puck rolls right into the Soviet zone to Michigan. He just shoots the puck. Barry Beck traps it at center. Beck over the line to Gretzky, coming in with Dion. Dion in front, but Kazatonov intercepted that. Soviet Lurianov, he shoots the puck. Edwards makes the save. Paul Reinhardt, number 24, lead pass, got away from Dion, and back after it is Vasiliev, number 6. Four minutes, 12 seconds left to play in the second period. It's a 2-2 tie. And these two teams tied for top spot in Canada Cup 81. Identical records of three wins and a tie. And they're tied in this one. Vasilia. Omotov got to the line. Luktov brings it in. And it's offside at the Team Canada Blue Line. Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. What a great rivalry it's been over the years, the Soviets against Canada's national teams. But in games involving the Soviet national team and the National Hockey League's Team Canada, the record going into tonight, the Soviets have won six, Team Canada five, and one game has been a tie. And this one's tied, and they're leading the Canada Cup 81 standing. Middleton backhands it, Flukov traps the puck to Homatov, and now Danny Gare gets it out to Lindsman. Over to Middleton. Middleton coming in for Canada to Gare. His shot, Michigan makes the save. He's been brilliant in goal for the Soviets tonight. Well, the key to that play on the three-on-two is Kenny Lindsman just to the right of your screen going right to the net. He takes one defender to the net. Danny Gare slips into the hole between them. You see Lindsman and the other defender, Vasiliev, off the side of the net allowing Gare to go right to the net home free and get the good opportunity. But that's what happens when you go to the net. Lensman, number 28, playing his second straight game for Team Canada. Here's Gare fanning on a shot. Potvan batted in front. Gare tried to get that pass from Potvan, but he got away from him. Now here comes Kapustin. Chapelli up in front. Robinson checked him as Kapustin is taken out of the play by Kenny Lensman. Puck is underneath Potvan. And we get a whistle a game with a face-off in the Team Canada zone. Well, there's a penalty handed out to Team Canada. Pot fan for smothering the puck in the corner, obviously uh, grabbing it. Well, he lost the stick. He started to the bench, 
Then the Soviet spoke out. He had to come back onto the ice. The puck went deep into the Team Canada zone. He was trying to do the best he could inside the zone without the stick. And in the corner, he fell on it and drew the puck with his hand underneath him. He just falls on it. It's no penalty. But when he pulls it underneath him, it's a delay of the game penalty. 16.50, puck van delay of game. It's a 2-2 tie. Goring shoots the puck down into the Soviet zone. Billy Eletinov goes back after it. He's on defense with Vladimir Zubkov, number three. Ganey. Oh, he almost capitalized on that bouncing puck. Pass straight up the middle. This is number 23, Viktor Shalimov. To Shapaliev, number 21. Shapaliev, watched by Hartsburg. It goes to Kapustin. In behind the net, trying to stuff it in front. Edwards traps it at the side of the net and gets another whistle. 2.42 left to play in the second period. Well, there we saw again the Soviets' attackers crossing just at the blue line. And Raymond Bork, it's tough with the score tied to take the chance as they switch to step out and flatten one of them. But he had the opportunity there, but he backed off a little bit, afraid of just getting caught at the blue line. But we've seen a lot of the Soviet crossing, their forwards crossing, trying to confuse the defense just inside the blue line. Gay LaFleur looking on from the Team Canada bench. He has one of Canada's goals, Gretzky the other. Larionov and Shapaliev have scored for the Soviets. And the Soviet Union on a power play right now. This is Kazatonov, number seven. Goring forces him back. Makarov, number 24, gets it into the middle. This is Larionov, Igor Larionov. And he's bumped by Craig Hartsburg. Kruchov bumped there by Ganey and hits the ice heavily. Ganey going after the puck. Goring's helmet lying on the ice there. Here's Zukov, and he shoots it out to center ice. And the Soviets, Krutov, coming in with Makarov, who takes the trailing pass back to Krutov. Krutov trying to get it to Fedosov, and Bob Ganey has it for Team Canada. Up with Brian Krutje, over the line, tried to get it through, and it hit Kazatona. Krutje nailed against the boards there by number two, Fedosov. 35 seconds remaining in the penalty to Dennis Potvin. Kazatona for the Soviets, in with Makarov, Beck. Knocked the puck away from him, then he kicks it loose. Comes over the line. Kruchov trying to catch up to it, and he's checked there by Larry Robinson. 20 seconds left in the penalty. Middleton after it into the Soviet zone. Here's Middleton right in front, and Michigan stopped that on the short side as it rolled off the stick of Rick Middleton. Now Drozdetsky moving in front. Here's Drozdetsky, and that's stopped by Edwards. End to end action. Well, Barry Beck got caught a little flat-footed there right at his own blue line, and Drozdetsky just put it into overdrive as he got to the blue line. No move. Just broke to the outside, around him, cut to the net. Donnie Edwards coming out, was able to stop that puck with his pad. Middleton taking the pass just off the boards at the, the end, just previous to the opportunity by Drozdetsky, almost slipping it underneath the Soviet goaltender. But we're going end-to-end -end here late in the second period. Each team has had three power play opportunities, and each team has a power play goal. Hotvan with three seconds remaining in his penalty. 1.13 left to play in the second period. Canada has outshot the Soviets 10-7 in the second period. Rozdetsky, number 13, as Hotvan's back on the ice. Babinov had trouble at the line. Golikov drops it back to Vasilya. One minute left to play in the second period. Gamayev, a long shot. Edwards stopped that, and Barry Beck traps the puck. Here's Beck. Gila Fleur, number 10, up to Wayne Gretzky. Bounced off his stick into the Soviet zone. Vasilya. Marcel Dion goes over to check him. The puck is cleared to an open wing. Drozdetsky and Robinson after it. Drozdetsky has it. Drozdetsky, in front. Gamayev, a shot. The rebound, and Edwards made a big save there. And the net is knocked off its mooring. As the Soviet player, Drozdetsky, went crashing into the crossbar and lifted the net. It's the net, the net. Just outside the blue. You can hear the voice of the referee telling the linesman to alter that net. And Luther and Collins go to work. 31 seconds left to play in the second period. And a reminder, the semifinals are coming up on Friday. A big doubleheader on CTV. We'll have one semifinal from Ottawa, followed by the other semifinal from the Montreal Forum. Of course, the matchups are still 
in the air depending on the outcome of this game tonight. Now Buckman at his own line for Team Canada. Buckman clears it in. Gretzky left it for Dion. A shot that was off the net but gloved by Michigan with 20 seconds remaining in the second period. Fans a little impatient and hollering here, uh, feeling that Michigan didn't have to kill that glove uh, uh, stop that he makes. Now he puts it in the back of the net. You see, stops the play. We're really going to perhaps uh, tip it to his defender going behind the net. Fans a little unhappy. There's Gila LaFleur, a backhand. Billy Letinoff stops that. Gretzky, and it comes to Zlukov. Zlukov back for the Soviets. Up with Homotov. Homotov takes the pass in front, trying to get it back to Zlukov, and LaFleur taps it away. Five seconds. Here comes Dion. A long shot. Low and just off the target. And that'll do it. The siren goes to end the second period, a highly entertaining period of hockey here at the Montreal Forum. Team Canada and the Soviet Union deadlocked in a 2-2 tie. And we'll be back with the second intermission in a moment. Welcome back to the Montreal Forum. This is Bernie Pascal along with Tom Watt. It's a 2-2 tie. Canada and the Soviet Union. 16.57 left to play in the third period. Come on, Bob, both you on the line. Keep it to the side, both you. Those are the comments of the referee, Bob Henry. Both teams at full strength. Reinhardt, watched there by Brozdetsky. Now it's brought out by Rick Middleton. Middleton for Canada to Lindsman, but it's offside at the Soviet line. Danny Gare was free on the right side. He just took a, a half a step over that line, creating the offside and the near side. But he had a step on the last defender, and had he stayed onside and that puck got slipped across, they would have been in business. And fans right across the country offering their support to Team Canada 81. Middleton against number 25, Vladimir Golikov. The puck is cleared up over the glass and quite a scramble for it as someone tries to get the souvenir puck. Speaking of souvenirs, it's amazing how all the souvenir t-shirts and whatnot, you, you check around the rink and most of them are gone. Very popular items, the pucks and t-shirts. Golikov. Puck is out. Reinhardt shoots it right back into the Soviet zone. This is Vladimir Zubka. 23 years of age on the Soviet team. Can't get it out. Lindsman in there for Team Canada. Here's Lindsman trying to pass it back to Reinhardt. Hit a skate and Perry Beck. With Gamayev checking him. Gamayev lost his stick. Puck comes to Drozdetsky. Here's Drozdetsky trying to hammer it in front. And he's checked by Beck. Reinhardt off the boards to Danny Gare. He backhands it. Gamayev swings at the loose puck. And Perry Beck has it for Canada. Out to center, Middleton, stopped there. Grozdetsky brings it back for the Soviets. Then he's checked at the line by Reinhardt. Lindsman, up with Middleton and Gare. Middleton right in, a shot, he scores! Middleton! The puck just going off the defender's skate. Allowing Middleton to jump in behind. There we see the puck going behind the last defender. Middleton makes no mistake. And that's one thing that he can do. The puck hits the last defender. He can't turn quick enough to get it. Middleton alertly jumps in. Look how he puts that puck right up high quickly in his forehand. That's one of the things that Rick Middleton does very, very well. When he's around that net, he can put it up quick and under the bar. Rick Middleton has averaged 33 goals a season for the Boston Bruins. The last two years, 40 and 44 goals. And that's a big one tonight to give Team Canada the 3-2 lead. Middleton scoring for Canada. Now the Soviets come back. Larry Onoff, and he lost it. Hartsburg off the boards, and he gets it out. Now Canada is scoring. Up to Duguay, a long shot over the top of the net. Middleton from Lindsman and Gare at 4 8 This is Sportsap. News Luke Top. Luke Top over the line. Tried to get the pass on the left side to Homatop. That failed. And a collision in front on goalie Don Edwards. As Sportsap collided with Don Edwards and Sportsap gets up slowly. Canada Cup. 
81 will continue in a moment. We played four minutes and 50 seconds in the third period. It's Canada three and the Soviet Union two. Both teams are at full strength. Babinov to Khrushchev off the boards into the Team Canada zone. Robinson number 19. He was on the world championship team for Team Canada at the world championships in Sweden. Last April, Robinson and Lafleur joining the team over there, and he made the first team all-star. And he's been playing his all-star performance in this Canada Cup, as Clark Gillies has, and he's been outstanding as well. The last time Clark Gillies was on the ice, he and Vasiliev went to the boards together, and that was an interesting matchup because two of the biggest men, Vasiliev, one of the strongest men in hockey, both of them went to the boards, and I'd have to say the ice shook, but it was a sob between the two of them. You talk about durability, too. Clark Gillies has missed just 22 games, seven seasons in the National Hockey League. Now the Soviet coming back in. Kapelia breaking for the front of the net. The pass never came from Kapustin. Ilya Letinov. He passes to Shapeliev, and he backhands it into the Team Canada zone. Robinson, Bossy trying to get it out. Bossy bumped there by Zukov and got to the line, but that was it. Kept in by Zukov, trying to get it to Kapustin, and it's cleared out. Bossy slips, goes after the puck. Kapustin takes him into the boards along with linesman Bob Luther. Now Shalimov clears it out. Kapustin at center for the Soviets. Coming in with Golikov, he backhands it in. Potvan chases it there. Shalimov right on Dennis Potvan. It's clear to the other side. Marcel Dion, number 16. New Potvan. Denny Potvan to Guy Lafleur. He backhands it to Gretzky. What a pass. Here's Gretzky. Right in on goal. A shot. Oh, and it just deflected off the stick of goaltender Michigan. Canada's Marcel Dion. He's checked by Zukov. Gretzky tries to get the puck. Now Lafleur behind the net to Gretzky. Gretzky with Beck in front. Back to Guy Lafleur. A shot. And that's blocked in front. Back to Lafleur. A drive. A rebound. They score! Marcel Dion. A lot of excitement here, but you can't give Wayne Gretzky that time behind the net. He gives it the first time to LeFleur. The stop was... It's the second opportunity, and he gets it through. Marcion just parked off the doorstep. Makes no mistake about that. But the Soviet defenders guilty of clearing that puck badly. After the first opportunity, Marcel Dion just tucked it behind Michigan. 4-2 Team Canada. Marcel Dion from Lafleur and Gretzky at 6:29, the third goal of the series for Marcel Dion. Canada four and the Soviet Union two. Announcing the assist, that's the cheer for Lafleur, and then the one for Gretzky. Now the puck is back in. Here's a chance for Garrett Scott, and Michigan stopped that. 13-27 left to play in the third period and the game. While Zhubkov, number three, the defenseman for the Soviet Union, he's been the, the man that must feel uh, uh, badly because it was off his skate that uh, Team Canada got the third goal when uh, they got the opportunity in the middle, of it, and that was he was the man that threw it right back again to Lafleur for the second opportunity from just inside the blue line. As a tone off, number seven deep in his own zone, got the puck out to Drozdetsky, then he tried to flip it to Golikov, it failed. As a tone off, will set it up again for the Soviet. Betasov got away from Middleton. Golikov flipped it to the line. He stopped right at the Team Canada blue line. Gear. Watched by Drozdetsky. Middleton flips and falls, but backhands the puck down the ice. Canada with two third-period goals. Middleton and Dion have been the goal scorers in this third period. Canada leading 4-2. The Soviets coming back, though. Drozdetsky up over the line, lost control of the puck, and it's cleared back to the Soviet zone. As a Konov takes Middleton heavily to the ice. Benesov. Middleton stopped it at the line. Now it's carried on. Drozdetsky to Zlutov. Zlutov up over the line. Here he is at the side of the net and sent it through the crease. Fedosov is stopped by Ganey. 
coming up with Ron Duguay. Duguay to Ganey. Ganey racing into the corner. Kazatone off after him. And the puck came in front, but Duguay couldn't get a shot. And it's held against the board in the Soviet zone. A 4-2 lead for Team Canada. And Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. At the Montreal Forum, welcome back to our CTV coverage of Canada Cup 81. I'm Bernie Pascal with Tom Watt, Ron Rouge, Eddie Westfall. Canada leading 4-2. Potvin in front for Goring, and Vasiliev intercepts that. Luktov for the Soviets. Got it out. Omotov was checked. He and Goring have a bit of a stick-swinging effort. Here's Ganey bringing it back for Canada. Goring catching up. Into the corner goes Goring, fanned on the pass. Bobanov spun around, clears the puck off the board. Sluptov lets it go. Golikov, Sportsev up to the line. Oh, and Duque stepped into him. Now Canada's Potvin. Denny Potvin up with Bob Ganey over the Soviet line. Stepped around Vasiliev, he scores! What a play! Denny Potvin stepped around Vasiliev, and it's 5-2 Canada. Well, again, the Soviet defense a little too casual. Denny Potvin just moved inside. Everybody played him a little casual. The great captain for the Soviets just let the block right through. The puck drops on his stick, and he shoots it very quickly. Everybody in the Soviet team just standing around, much, playing a much too casual for the importance of this game. Vasiliev tries to take him out with his body, just moves around him, shoots quickly on the short side, beating Michigan. Team Canada has been simply awesome. Denny Potvin scores Team Canada's fifth goal. And great reason for a smile on that Team Canada bench. But let's not forget the Soviets are a powerful team and they have 11 and a half minutes left to get back into it. Here's Bossy. Bossy slaps it over Trotje trying to get to it. Billy Letkinov. Now it comes to Makarov. Makarov, number 24. Up he goes with Larry Onoff. Uh, delayed offside. It's cleared over the line. Potvin unassisted at 8.27. Gillies gets a shot. Michigan played that rather coolly, but stopped it. Now Trotje in front. Michigan blocks that. Gillies gets a shot. He scores! Canada! Bossy in front. And Canada leads 6-2. Michigan really upset. Skates all the way out, almost to the blue line. Well, he thinks that Bossy kicked it in, but he didn't kick it in. It went off his leg all right. But the puck comes through. Gilly's getting the opportunity again for him. He just turns, slaps at the puck, and you see Bossy going across in front. It hits him as Gilly's shot went through and goes behind the goaltender. Michigan was upset, thinking that Bossy directed it. But the shot coming through, Bossy just hits the inside of his skate and goes behind Michigan from in front of the net. I don't think he directed it in, but Michigan obviously thought so. There it is, hitting the left skate of Bossy on the way in front of the net. Michigan looking as the puck goes behind him. Time of the goal, 8.59. Six to two for Team Canada. Now the puck is cleared in. Here's Gretzky with Benesov. Got it, hit Lafleur on the skate. He couldn't get a shot. Chapeliev in behind his own net. Now Kazatonov, a pass up the middle. Golikov trying to get that lead pass to Kaputin. And that failed. Bossy from Gillies and Kutche. Bossy with the sixth Team Canada goal. We'll have a special presentation coming up at the conclusion of the game. A lot of cars of Canada will make a special presentation of a lot of Neva 4x4 at the end of tonight's game. Many stars in this one. Leon to LaFleur. Coming in with Gretzky. The pass failed to click and the Soviets bring it back. Peliev up over the line trying to get the pass. And uh, Shalimov missed that. A drive right on Benesov. And Edwards makes the save. Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. Bell teams have played the Soviet national teams 13 games. And in total goals, each has 48. That's how evenly they've been matched over the years. Canada this one tonight leading the Soviets. 6-2. Canada out shooting the Soviets 
30 to 18 with 10-16 left to play. Now Reinhardt for Team Canada gives it to Lindsman. He backhands it high down the ice. Danny Gare, Michigan away out of the net. And that almost hit the stick of Danny Gare. Rozdetsky trying to feed a pass to Golikov. Babinov shoots it down the ice. Reinhardt of the Calgary Flames to Boston Bruins, Rick Middleton. Up the middle, Danny Gare of the Buffalo Sabres. Off his stick. Here comes Vasilia. He shoots it wide of the Team Canada goalie, Don Edwards. Golikov is bumped. Here comes Kenny Lynch. Now he goes deep into his own zone. Golikov chases him back. Barry Beck. Kamaya after him. Beck, number three. Sends a bad pass there. Drozdetsky has it for the Soviets. Drozdetsky in front. Golikov a shot deflected wide. Danny Gare in his own zone. Here comes Gare right in front of the net. Pass high, goes down into the Soviet zone. Back for it is Babinov. A member of the Soviet Red Army team. Babinov, a pass up to Sportsev on right wing. 27-year-old Sportsev wearing jersey 26. And it's slapped away by Bob Ganey. Vasily up a shot right on. Edwards makes the save. Vasiliev and he didn't take any wind up with that shot as the puck comes back to the point trying to get the puck out of the zone Vasiliev just moves in very short wind up right on Edwards holds his ground team Canada defenders get back to make sure they don't get the second opportunity now Edwards out of the net slaps it over to Ron Duguay Duguay to Goring and Ganey uh, down that left side Billy Elettinov gets to it first Billy Elettinov Ganey on top of him Sportsef knocked over by Larry Robinson and his own teammate collided. Here's Goring in front. He scores! Goring! 7-2 for Team Canada. Well, again, the backhand, two uh, Soviet defenders whacking into one another, knocking one another down. Butch scoring alert. He just jumps on that loose puck, makes a little move, and watch the backhand. High up over top of the shoulder of Michigan and the backhands tonight underneath the bar have been very good for Team Canada. Goring just busting in, makes just a little move and then whoops, there goes the backhand up high just underneath the bar. Butch Goring from St. Boniface, Manitoba. Now anytime you score five goals in a period, never mind against the Soviet national team, you're playing really well. Team Canada has got five goals in a little more than 10 minutes against the Soviet Union's national team. And Makarov brings it back now for the Soviets. Makarov up over the line, coming in with Prutov, watched by Hartsburg, and the puck goes to Trotje, who gives it to Bossy. Bossy with Gillies wide open, but the pass was blocked by Kazatona. Goring, his third goal of the Canada Cup from Ganey at 11.25. Goring from Ganey, 11.25. Makarov, oh, and he can't get a shot. Hartsburg hooks him just as he was attempting to get a drive away. Gillies lets the puck go and it rolls outside the blue line. Larionov. Benesov, he shoots it in. Hartsburg goes deep into his own zone for Canada. Sets the stage for two big semifinal games on Friday. Both will be televised on the CTV network live. One game from Ottawa, 5 o'clock Eastern time. And the other semifinal in Montreal at, 5, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Both games Friday, the semifinals on CTV. Here's Petasov at center for the Soviets. Dragging the puck, bringing it up to the Team Canada line. Larionov takes the pass, tried to return it to Petasov, and that just failed to click. Guy Lafleur, seven minutes and eight seconds remain in the third period. Marcel Dion, Beck, knocked the puck out. Brought back in by Larionov, a pass over a shot, and that by Shalimov just went wide. Now Gretzky chasing the puck in the Soviet zone, Babinov after him, and he's nailed against the boards by the Soviet defenseman. Back checking here, Gretzky, straight in a shot, and Michigan stops that. Determined play of Wayne Gretzky. Now the Soviets. Coming out again, the pass to an open wing. Beck goes after it. Kapustin gets to it. It's called on an offside pass. Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. 
Team Canada with seven goals, the most goals NHL opposition have scored against the Soviets. The previous high was six. That was a 6-5 win in the eighth game of the 72 series. And Canada leading this game 7-2. And they've got some debris on the ice, so the game is held up momentarily. And while we have a moment, we want to welcome all the viewers across the full CTV network. And I'm going to sneak in a special hello to one of my sons, Brian, who is in the Burnaby General Hospital. He's minus his appendix today. So Brian, a speedy recovery. 6.31 remaining here in the third period. 7-2 for Team Canada. The puck cleared. After it goes Victor Shalimov. Shalimov into the Team Canada zone. Gamayev moving in front. And back comes Danny Gare. Gare, a native of Nelson, B.C. He's squeezed out of the play. Traps the puck to Lindsman. Here's Potvin. A shot deflected high and out of play. While well, Danny Gare hustling after that puck playing his usual aggressive hockey game. Scotty Bowman making a quick change here with the five-goal lead in the late stages of the third period. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you never get caught out there with anybody too tired. When you've got uh, that type of lead late in the hockey game, all was changed quickly. Both teams at full strength. Goring, number 91. Duguay goes after it. Fedosov to Kazatonov. Kazatonov, 21-year-old defenseman, number seven. Two's looped off. Duguay got a piece of him. Fourth, over down to Goring. Here's Goring. Duguay racing for the front of the net. It's intercepted. Looped off. Gets the puck ahead. Here's Kortsev. For the Soviets, number 26. And Craig Hartsburg takes him heavily to the ice. Kazatonov. Ahead now. The puck comes to Zluktov. Waiting for his teammate to get onside. That's Kortsev back into the play. Now it's cleared into the Team Canada zone. Five minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the game. Canada leading 7-2. to two. Pass too far ahead for Goring. He goes off in a line change. Corkstep gets the shot. Don Edwards stops that. Donnie Edwards in goal for Canada. Here's Pache to Clark Killies. Back in front to Bossy. Oh, and Michigan got a piece of that as Bossy let the drive go. And the right pad of Michigan deflected it into the corner. Back goes after the puck. To Clark Gillies. Now Makarov, number 24, gets away from Brian Trottier. Trapped there by Bossy. In front to Gillies. A backhand shot. That hit Makarov. Now the Soviets, Homotov. He stopped there. Some great play by Team Canada in this game tonight. Bossy knocked it away from Makarov. Clark Gillies went after it. And it's Benesov, number two. Four and a half minutes left to play in the game. Reinhardt, number 24 for Canada. Pass intended for Marcel Dion. Got away from him. Michigan touched it, so there's no icing. Dion in behind the net to Gretzky. Gretzky in front of shot, and Reinhardt's drive was blocked by goaltender Michigan. Now the Soviet, Larionov. He passes it over. Coming in, and a top side Vasiliev at the blue line. You know, it's usually... Hey, Tom, we'll get to that in a moment. Canada Cup 81 will continue in a moment. Semi-finals on CTV on Friday. Czechoslovakia and the Soviet Union, assuming, of course, Canada holds on to this five-goal lead. That'll be a 5 p.m. start, Ottawa time. And then Friday night, Canada and the United States, both games live on CTV. You know, Paul Reinhardt left on that last shift and headed into the dressing room with the team doctor. Here comes Krutov. He's checked by Larry Robinson. Puck is cleared. Back to center. Krutov sends it over to Vasiliev. Vasiliev, number six for the Soviets. Here's Gretzky, but he loses it. Larry Nonoff comes back in, and Guy Lafleur shifts it out to center. Marcel Dion bumps with Vasiliev. Robinson, he shoots, and Babinov clears it off the board. Krutov for the Soviets. Now a little scrambly at the center ice area. Marcel Dion brings it back in for Team Canada. Into the corner goes Guy Lafleur. In behind the net. Gretzky let it go. And Krutov has it for the Soviets. Up to Shapeliev. Oh, and Robinson, or rather, uh, Robinson goes after the puck. But Potvin got a piece of Shapeliev. And there'll be a penalty coming up to Team Canada. I think we shut up. High-sticking penalty to Team Canada's Dennis Potvin. 3.16 left to play in the third period. 
Hot Van coming through, gets the stick in front as the Soviet player tries to make the little move to the outside, push the puck back to the inside. Denny Pot Van had him lined up on the board side, came back with a high stick as the Soviet player cut the opposite direction. A highly entertaining game here at the Montreal Forum, setting the stage for two great semifinal games on Friday, also to be seen live on CTV, and then the championship game on Sunday. There's a shot locked in front. Now it's back. Number 23 is Viktor Shalimov into the corner. It comes back to Kazatonov. Over to Fedosov. He's checked. Rick Middleton up for Team Canada. Middleton ragging the puck at center. Then drops it back to Craig Hartsburg. He fires it. And it almost hit linesman Bob Luther as it sails into the Soviet zone. Fedosov. A pass ahead. Number 23, Viktor Shalimov. He's coming in with Chapeliev. Chapeliev swings in the Canadian zone. Back to Kazatonov, his drive, Edwards kicks that out. Soviets have it again, Kazatonov over to Fedosov. Fedosov, a shot, oh, and that's deflected just wide of the Team Canada net. Another penalty coming up to Canada, a delayed penalty against Canada. Kazatonov, a shot, Edwards stopped it and smothers the puck. And a cross-checking infraction to Team Canada with Potvan having a minute four remaining in his penalty. Raymond Bork heads over to the penalty box. Well, on the shot from the point, uh, trying to dive and, and stop that, Craig Hartsburg, you see him after he had uh, broken his stick, but he really broke his stick. He isn't penalized. Bork is the one who's penalized, but Hartsburg cross-checked the Soviet defender in front of the net before losing his stick. He broke his stick over top of him. The call is cross-checking. No two Team Canada defensemen in the penalty box. Bork for cross-checking. And Potvan has a minute four remaining in his high sticking penalty. Bork's penalty at 17.40. They'll drop the puck in the Team Canada zone. Donnie Edwards admitted to us that he was disappointed when he was cut from Team Canada, but with the injury to Billy Smith, Donnie Edwards told me, he says, I didn't want to go back to Buffalo. I wanted to stay with the team. But he says, I went back. I worked out every day and then got the call. And he said, I hope I play. And he's played tonight. And he's played extremely well. And he's very proud to be part of Team Canada. And that's the feeling with all the players. The 35 players that were invited to camp, they all realized a very difficult decision. They're all superstars in their own right. And all be very proud of their efforts on behalf of the National Hockey League and Team Canada. Well, you see the frustration on Makarov's face, and you know, uh, it's an indication of a losing hockey team. So many times Can Canadian teams have been criticized for being frustrated late in the hockey game. Whenever you're down, it doesn't matter what nationality you are, you get frustrated, you take the bad penalties, and you mouth off the officials and so on, and it's evident now that the Soviets are a little frustrated here late in the hockey game. They're making some dumb plays and down seven to two. Huck is trapped at the line. There's Kazatonov. Robinson knocked it loose. Trotje trying to get it. Robinson then backhands it. Down the ice. Team Canada, remember, two men short. Botvan has 21 seconds left in his penalty. The Soviets at full strength. Canada leading 7-2. Here's Krutov, hooked by Duguay. Huck comes back to Fedosov. Kazatonov, a shot. And that went high over the top of the net with Edwards reaching. Fedosov back to Kazatonov to Fedosov. Fedosov returns the pass. Kazatonov, Duguay forechecking the shot. They score! Deflected in front off Makarov's stick, I believe. A bullet drive from the point. Deflected in front past Edwards. No chance whatsoever. I don't think Makarov uh, really knew it. He had his stick on the ice, but I think it hit up on the shaft. We'll get a look at it. As Kazatnov moves in, moves the puck across, the shot coming from the point from Kazatnov. It hit him up on the shaft of the stick to go behind. It didn't hit on the blade. We see the defenseman moving it at the point when you're too short, hitting up on top, not on the ice, hitting the top of the stick and into the net. Another look, the puck comes across, and when you've got the two-man advantage, you've got to work from the point usually. But Team Canada have two out and only one back. But the puck just deflected by Donnie Edwards in front of the net. USSR goal scored by number 24, Sergei Makarov. Well, we might say he smacked it into the net, but it's Makarov that got the goal. 
One Dicker Dean left the play. 7-3. Donnie Edwards, two years ago, played the Soviet Red Army. The Buffalo Sabres played them in that series. And Edwards was the winning goalie as Buffalo won that night 6-1. So he's had pretty good success against Soviet teams. Canada leading this 7-3. We're into the final minute. This is Danny Gare. Chapeliev got a piece of him. Gare carrying on. Now Babinov lines him up. Gare still hustling in that corner. Leaves it for Clark Gilly. Gilly. And they hold it against the boards. And a face-off this time in the Soviet zone. Reminder again, the big semifinals coming up on Friday on CTV. 5 o'clock Eastern Time in Ottawa. It'll be the Soviets against Czechoslovakia. We'll be in Ottawa to bring you that game. And then the other semifinal, 8 p.m. Eastern Time from the Montreal Forum. It'll be Team Canada and Team USA. And what a great job the USA team has done in this Canada Cup. Coach Bob Johnson, uh, Tony Esposito, and all the American crew, general manager Lou Nanny, they've been very outstanding in this tournament as well. Vasiliev, another penalty coming up. It'll be a delayed penalty to Team Canada. Delayed call. Michigan's out of the net. Gilly touched the puck. And now the penalty coming up to Team Canada, I believe, Danny Gare. Canada 18 roughing! Roughing penalty to Danny Gare of Team Canada. And for all these players uh, to get a couple of days off after the championship game, then it's uh, hit into training camp for most of them. I know Tom Watt will be heading to the camp of the Winnipeg Jets opening their training camp on Monday. Number 18, Danny Gare, two minutes for roughing. At 19 minutes, 35. Here's Duguay. Beck shoots the puck. Stopped at the line by Babinov. Up on the left side goes Drozdetsky. Drozdetsky brings it over the line. Trying to get the pass back to Vasiliev. And in frustration, I'm sure, just sends it out to center right. Eight seconds. The countdown is underway. Here at the Montreal Forum. What an outstanding performance by Team Canada. There it is. The siren goes. The game is over. And Team Canada off the bench to congratulate goalie Donnie Edwards as Canada outshot the Soviets 33-23 and the most important statistic they come out with a four goal victory 7-3 over the Soviet Union.